And it looks like we're going to be finally getting into the action. Gridlock, Hardpoint, Butler, University versus UTK. All right. You ready for this one, J-Pro? Absolutely, pal. This is going to be an incredible matchup. I'm really interested to see how it plays out in the end. I got a lot of faith in both these teams. And I think we're going to kick it off here with the new guys in University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Sounds like a plan. Can't wait. And here we go, barring any issues. We got UTK Sports. We got Butler. Let's get here for them in the chat. We're going to get out here with, starting off with the energy. And with Stainless. Since they cut down by Johnny Ice. Yeah, great start here out of Butler. They're taking out three off the rip. They're going to get these starting points, but it's still contested. Everyone is out of the hill right now. Looks like Butler's going to beat him there, but there are four players from UTK flooding right back in. Absolutely, and it looks like Siren's just going to try to hold down the hill, but UTK Ears is going to get their Vortexes on the flank. However, he's going to find one, but I have to back up to Small Room. And it looks like right now UTK going to get the next a few seconds. Yeah, but if you look at your map right here, you have number four Vortex. He looks like he's going to start the rotation, actually. Just lurking over there in the showers area, flanking around the back. Huge gunfight by Slash and I was going down in the back. They're going to win these spawns for the new hill. Exactly. If we were number five and uh, we're number five and number two just spawned, they already are controlling the spawns, and it's but all just a rotation game right now. Number seven, Stainless sneaking around the back, but he gets cut down from behind by Vortex. And it looks like UTK is just going to be pushing from this orange connector towards this second hard point. Slash and I went winning all the gunfights in the back. Push is coming in from the front, number seven. See if he can get anything done. Breaks through the front of the hard point. He's going to get naded. He's going to be weak and have to challenge something, or he's going to get cut down by these nades. But he still stays alive. Takes out Johnny Ice from behind. He has a 1v1 gunfight to win in the hill, and he gets cut down by Hensler. Yeah, UTK just keeps pushing from the front. There's going to be one player in the back. Those going to be scars. He's going to get taken out. And it looks like this hill's just going to be contested. UTK is going to break through, however. Maybe they got to win these gunfights, but it just looks like Butler's just going to give it up and start rotating. I think that I think that's a smart call, especially with this tree room hard point coming up, being able to hold on to that match, especially. But it looks like a couple of gunfights are going in the favor of Butler. But it does look like Butler is going to have the early control of this hill. And I think right now, if you're University of Tennessee Knoxville, you got to pray that number eight Juan is going to get some kills on this flank here. Let's switch yeah, on over him. Spot one, you're going to take him out. But he's going to get cut down immediately traded but butler spawning close they're just gonna flood right back into this hill exactly you need jump fights to win though stainless is gonna find one he sees two more he's gonna find the second bud slash and i is gonna take him out juan just gonna be sitting in the hill it's gonna be one he's gonna take him out and utk just like that is gonna be a breakthrough for the first three hard points of this game utk did not get the initial time but they're able to break through and it looks like looks like butler's rotating once again They've been giving up a lot of scrap time on these first three hills. Yeah, look at where number nine. Hold this one. Look where number nine spawned. He spawned here in the back. He might get some good timing. Oh, that nade doesn't end up helping him. Slash and I is gonna find two. Yeah, stainless and all of um all the UTK spawning all the way out. They do have number six trying to work on a flank, trying to get these spawns with him. But he has absolutely no help. He needs to wait for this number ten on the mini map. His teammate, he's gonna find one, but he's gonna get traded out immediately by slash and eyes. Charles is going to find one in the back, and if you do notice, Two in the back. Vortex does have that lightning strike available to him, which could become incredibly important, he especially needs, in these more open hills on this map. He needs to win these gunfights, and he's not. He's going to get cut down immediately by Alliance. Johnny Ice, and they hit with the, sh the shot beatdown. So prevalent in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. And I think one thing we need to start looking out for is the specialist game. Who's going to use their specialists better than the other team? I think that really is what these maps are all going to come down to. Yeah, Vortex starting off extremely hot right now, 15 and 5. I know Vortex has been talking about it. He know that he knows that he's the one of the better players. He knows that he can be really good, and I think he's been putting in the time and effort to show that he really is. And actually, guys, we have a quick score update. Liberty University Red takes the map one, 250 to 26. Oh my! Interesting scoreline. 
Cortex is gonna throw that stun. He's gonna pull the Tempest out, and luckily Slash Knight's gonna save him, but he misses the nose. Uh, he misses the hip fire. Stainless, just gonna be this top overpass area. And Down the ice, trying to get some kills on the hill, taking out one, taking out two. Vortex calls in a lightning strike, trying to push him back, takes out one. He's gonna get traded out immediately. And Johnny Ice has a big gunfight coming up right here. He's gonna see two of them. And he's gonna get shot in the back. Siren's gonna find two, Rex's gonna take him out. And if I'm Butler right now, with only 18 seconds left, I'm just trying to hold on these back 18 spawns for the yeah, next hill. Vortex gonna run into a quick gunfight in the front of the new hill, gonna take him out. Gonna spot one more, and he's gonna get melted by Alliance. He didn't stand a chance. Now, what we really need to look out for is that number seven I was pushing the back. He actually does get cut down, but they do have number six and number 10 gonna be fighting a two versus one in the back. So a two versus two, number 10 does cut through post. Let's see if he gets taken out. And he will by Johnny Ice. He's got the ice in his veins. And look at and where Vortex turning around and killing everyone off the spawn. But they do have the spawns right now. They need to fight for these. And it looks and look look at where UTK is spawning. They're spawning all the way on the other side of the map towards that uh, back tree square. Right, but they do have number nine and number ten in the back still. Vortex has to come behind him and win these gunfights right now. He's gonna spot one and go and take him out. But this player inside a team is not gonna turn around. Vortex might have another free kill. Oh, there's two right in front of him. Oh, he gets cut down right as he's going to be there. And it looks like Butler's already on this rotation battle. Well, there's going to be two players from UTK. That's already number nine and number ten working on this rotation. And they're going to spot him out. He's going to find one. doesn't find one. He gets shut down by Vortex. And hence, they picks up another. What looks like should have been a good rotation for UTK is going to be uh, in favor of Butler. And yeah, look at this. They're picking the wrong side to hold. Uh, UTK spawning on the opposite side. But it does look like Vortex gets those call-outs from his teammates. Alliance is going to pull out the War Machine to switch over to him. See what he does when he takes out one. But then he gets cut down immediately by Slash and Knives. But he does get the trade. He gets a shot off. Rex pulling out the Annihilator. Going to find one. He doesn't look like he's going to find another, though. Exactly. Stainless had two big gunfights, but Vortex is going to win both of them. They're pushing in. Vortex with three. Vortex with four. Vortex with Vortex. five. Oh my goodness, Vortex. Absolutely incredible. Stainless is going to answer with two of his own. But Henny is going to pop his war machine. And Butler's going to retain this hill. Vortex is 30 and 31 and 12 right now. It's looking like he really wants this. This W for the squad. But they are still down 135 to 198. They're going to hold this last three seconds of scrap, Tom. And it looks like they have the sponsor rotation. They just need to hold off these gunfires in middle. If they get these picks, Vortex pulls out the Tempest. Let's see if he can help out his teammates. He's going to get one in middle, take him out. He's going to go help his teammate. He'll takes out Stainless. He has full control of this hardcore right now. They just need to hold off these gunfights in middle. Especially with uh, the chaining ability of the Tempest. If he's able to hit one here, it might change the entire course. He's going to find he's one. Going. It's going to chain to three of them, but none of his teammates are going to be able there to clean them up. You make it's, it out. It's all up to Siren in this top he's, window. He's going to spot one. There's another one down. He's going to find two of them. Stunned. Hence, like he's taken out from behind an orange connector, but Siren, he finds two. But Stainless finds two. Scar's going to find one. Stainless finds a third. Butler's still alive. Exactly. Come back. 20 seconds left. Vortex going to find another. Vortex absolutely frying at 32 and 16. And what's going to be really interesting to look at is Slash and Knives still has his Annihilator. And if we look to the side of UTK, it doesn't look like they have any specialists available. The only one that's even close is going to be that Gravity Slam for Stainless. But they do have the early rotation towards this center truck hardpoint. Well, they just played a perfect hardpoint on that on that last hill. Stainless taking out two though. Gonna hold down the, the first bit of time for this first kill. And UTK is holding on. I think, I think we need to look to uh to Siren right here. He does have the grass spike. Maybe he can get close and, and do something brutal on this first kill. Slash and I is gonna take out two though. Exactly. If they're gonna need him to go big right at this moment. He's running. He knows that his team's life is on the line. This grab slam could be the game for them. He can't get taken down right now. He knows that this grab slam might be it. He tries to use it, but he is going to get cut down. With well, 20 seconds left, UTK can win on this hill. Slash and I is going to get three with the Annihilator. He's going to get cut down right after that. Looks like they're going to start the rotation, actually trying to uh, get this rotation, just hold out in the last 14 seconds and get the win. But Butler... 
trying to work the back. Number one on your mini map, Henslay, chilling right here underneath underpass, gonna run, run into one and get cut down immediately by Alliance. I think one thing to note is both teams have their gravity slam available, so this could be yes, a really big play. Right here. Yep, he used it, but he He's kills himself and finds nothing. Oh, Vortex takes out no. one, Sakunai takes out one. There, this, this is it. That's this, it right here, it, it, unless Johnny can get in, but he can't, it's contested. And it oh, looks he like gets, that he gets taken might out. be it. That's the map. GG's in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. UTK Esports is going to take map number one versus Butler. Let's take a look at this best play. And it's going to be Vortex taking out four. Beams that, that guy up the heady. Jumps out. He says, I want more. Takes out one. Takes out another. Takes out that fifth not player enough. right there. It ju it's just not enough. You're right. Absolutely. Let's take a look at this after action report. What an incredible first map. Really good plays coming out of both these teams. And we got Vortex leading the way to team with 6,000 damage drop in 45 and 21. Siren 26 and 21. But on the side of UTK, some pretty, pretty good slaying led by Stainless with 5,200 damage. But all their players above 3k damage. Same, but I really think it comes down to the amount of time in the hill. If we look at Rex and we look at Wan... 151 to 107, the highest on Butler, 128. Slashing yeah, Knives. Slashing Knives was zero, but he is holding down the spawn, so you can't really hate on him too much for that. Um, and I think it really just came down to the gunfights inside the hill. You know, Butler just wasn't winning those. They were spawning right up in the back, though, and then breaking the hill, but they, it was just a cycle. They, they couldn't break. Yeah, really, really good stuff right there. I think the one thing to note is the ability of UTK just to break through those uh, through those hard points. Butler might have had the initial setups, but UTK really coming out, really showing that they're not a sleeper team and they're here to play. And I think we're going to be back in just a moment for map number two. That's going to be Search and Destroy on Arsenal. Don't go... And we're back. We've got Arsenal, Search and Destroy... UTK Esports leading the series 1-0 after a, a pretty good, pretty good gridlock hard point. I'm not sure if my co-caster is currently here with me. I, I am here. Sorry about that. My mic was muted for a second. Absolutely fine, pal. Five seconds until the map is ready to go. I think we're going to kick it off this time with I think, Butler. I think we need to kick it off with vortex i see he does have that sniper out and Ooh. vortex is a deadly sniper Absolutely. if you give him a chance if you peek too long he will take your head off absolutely looks like he's going towards these back stairs area on the a bomb site he's going to be looking for this cross however he's not going to spot anything because all of these players are working their way towards middle map and towards b and it looks Actually. like UTK playing a really passive offense, to be honest, but it looks like Butler's just going to try to play a retake. A couple of shots went on Slash and Knives is going to find one, but he doesn't realize Siren got a really Henslade close angle. There's one player singled out in middle. I think players on Butler notice him. I'm not quite sure. Number nine, Johnny Ash is me watching the door. Rex takes him out. And Vortex it's... can be rotating over to B to help out his team, but you can UTK rotating over to A. Yeah, it looks like this 2v4 situation, the rotation is going to come in, but I think Butler already recognizes that as the time is coming down. Let me switch back to Vortex. If he gets some good timing, he sees this player on the outskirts. Almost snaps on him with a quick scope, but he's in a little bit of trouble here. He doesn't... He has a secondary, and we know how dangerous the Mozu can be. Absolutely. Sasha now is going to take out Stainless. It is a... Oh, Henslay takes out Rex. That was a perfectly played round out of Butler. Uh, they split the map. They watched both bomb sites, and they had a player watch in middle as well. They got the first of blood, and they just they just played it better. Great shots out of Flash and Ice. Absolutely some great lockdown defense on this B-bomb site for Butler. Ooh. Challenge of grip to ICR. Hate to see it. This time, UTK going to be on the offense. Let's see what they decide to do. Or UTK, excuse me, on the defense. 
Let's see what their play style is. And it looks like three of them are going to be pushing uh, towards this mid lobby. I say that one rotates towards generators. Vortex already finding a snipe. Let's see if he spots another. There's no one over here for him to see. Looks like number four might actually be rotating over here towards him. Let's see if he sticks out. But I don't know if he sees him. He didn't get a spot on him. He's going to get some bad Tommy. He's going to get taken out from behind by Alliance. And it looks like a 2v3 situation. Oh, Stainless is going to find one, however. Going to find two. It's a 1v1 situation versus Johnny Ice. Johnny Ice is finding the bomb. He does have a Maddox, and he has a stun at his disposal. These two Johnny's players. Johnny's playing this perfectly. He's just going to be playing for these bomb checks. I think if he sees them, he's going to throw that stun right away. Secure him that round win. However, if he gets shot in the back... He throws the stun too early, in my opinion. He's not gonna. He's not gonna spot anything. He's just trying to stun check generators. He does not see the top of his head, but now he does because he's shot. He's trying to get away. He will not. Stainless cuts him down from behind. He did not have a chance to get away. It's tied one one. Yeah, both teams better defenses win the game. And right now, I don't even know if it was a better defense at a UTK or a better clutch coming out of Stainless. The one v three to win the round. Was it really a 1v3? Yes, sir. Well, it was it was a 2v3, and then he got a trade, so. Ah. Yeah. That's two incredible stuff right there coming out of Stainless. And it looks like we got ourselves a match update. Iowa is up 2-0 in their series. Versus, Who is Iowa playing? Uh, Iowa is playing West Texas A&M. Oh, okay. My prediction has been wrong so far. And I, I, I see a lot of the presence on this map it seems to be coming around this mid area. A lot of players like to hold on to it so that they can wrap towards both, uh, both bomb sites if they so choose to. Mm -hmm. And it's like going to take out that player in lobby slash and I was going to get another. It is a five versus two situation in favor of Butler. The Vortex still has that sniper rifle. Yeah, and this number... He does have a free lane to get through. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to try to get together with his teammate. His teammate's not going to wait for him, though. I'm not sure how I feel about this. They are both working by themselves in a 2 versus 4. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the odds right now are. Alliance finds one, but Vortex takes one out with a sniper. Alliance takes out two, actually. He gets spotted from Lobby. Slash now is going to push him and cut him down. Absolutely, and definitely not the time right there for Razor Alliance. Needed to find that gunfight right there. Unfortunately, it's not going to pick it up. I'm not. Yeah, I don't like that decision making. I think they need to wait for each other, get together, and then you know just try and team shoot them or, or get a trade. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in the situation they were put in, a two v four. All right, I want to hop on with Vortex, see if he still has this sniper out. He does. He's going to be making his way towards this B site. He's going to run into two players on the side of UTK. Let's see if he peeks them or not. This is a pretty uncommon spot. I usually don't see many snipers going towards this B bomb site. Maybe um, more so a on lot the of... defensive side. But... Yeah. He's going to get cut down immediately by Stainless. Did not have a good angle on him. Alliance taking out flashing knives. Not much going down here on the map. Just some nades being thrown. Hence, like, gonna run into a gunfight. You can get cut down. But Johnny Ice finding one. There's still hope. Ah, he gets cut down. Yes, this SD is the battle of the defenses. Both these teams not win winning at a single offensive round. Tough situation right now coming out. Yeah, that was tough for, for Johnny. Not much he could have done. And it looks like Vortex has put the sniper away. He has the ICR out right now. That double grip ICR so prevalent right now in the meta. Yeah, see, if he just plays his angle right here, he can watch players cross. But he's going to get horrible timing. 
There are three here, but he has no idea. This player, Stainless, is going to peek him from the outside. He spots him, puts some shots down. He's not going to have any more information. No, he does think there's only one player. And if there was ever a round for him to have had that sniper out, it might have been this. Vortex is going to see a lot of pressure coming in. Hensley taking out two. Hensley going to get three. Frank taking out three. It's a one versus five right now. Alliance going to finally take out one. Hensley taking out the fourth. Hensley going absolutely massive for his squad. Yeah, right now that was just a great bait and switch coming out of him and Vortex. The Vortex playing on those back stairs and Hensley sitting closer towards this lobby area. He knows the pressure is coming in towards Vortex. He's just holding the cross and they just line up for him. Yeah, he's just baiting out Vortex. And a nice little jump shot great right team there. Play. Absolutely. And Butler. Still continuing the trend of winning defensive rounds. I'm going to kick it off with Hensley. He's 300 off that Lightning. He does have his War Machine. Let's see if he decides to use it. I'm not exactly sure if he'll decide to use it this early in the SMD. But he might. Well, see, if you're going to use it, I'd say, you know, you should use it early. Because once he gets in a later round, you know, the teams just start assuming that you have your specialist. So they're going to play around it and, and not body sag trophies and things like that so yeah. i like using it early especially since this is only round six yeah you, using it so it early he might early. yeah well. he might have an opportunity to re-earn it if he plays absolutely massive these next couple hensley like, gonna get the trade for johnny ice and he's just gonna back up all the way to their spawn pick up this bomb and it looks like he's gonna join his two teammates vortex and uh Sirerin towards this a bomb site One's going to be going towards events. One is going to be towards the outside of the map. Yeah, Hensley just throwing some shoulders right now. Rex going to take us around. Absolutely. And this is a tough situation right now. This 2v3. He's going to run across. Up, he's not going to spot the player to the left. But they do have a player in events. Vortex takes him out. He's going to get the pre-fire on the Rex. But he's not going to get the kill. He gets melted. Rex clutching up in the one or two versus one. And I have a couple of more map updates for you. Ole Miss wins their series with a hot 3-0 over the University of Cincinnati, as well as uh, LU Navy wins 3-0 versus Rutgers. Map 1, close, 250 to 184. And then the S&D, 6-2. And then a 3-1 control for Liberty Navy. And a couple more score updates. Liberty University Red is up 2-0 over Grand Canyon University. Got some incredible matches coming up right now. Back into this s &D. We got UTK. We got Butler all tied up at three apiece going into round number seven. Yeah, this looks like a mid-hit out of Butler here. They have one player to beat in the back of the lobby door. That is number nine, Johnny I or I'm sorry, out of UTK. And one player to beat, Johnny Ice in the back, number nine. Johnny Ice does have a stun here, but he might not know there's a player in this close corner. Yeah, see, Johnny's going to get some out because now we know that they're hitting mid because of that cluster grenade. But Alliance takes out Johnny in the back. Rex spawns one of Sarah. And Scar's taking out Hensley. Slash and I think shot in the back by Dev Rex. It's it is all... a one versus five for Vortex. And all his shows are going to get cut down by Stainless. Right there, that could be game changing. UTK is able to pick up an offensive round for their team. And if anything goes as the way it is, they could pick up their fifth round right here simply because of winning an offensive round right there. Yeah. Could change the pace of the entire game. Butler needs to answer right now. Going down 5-3 is not something you want to do. Especially being down 1-0 in the series. Yeah, no. You, you go down 5-3, you know, you, you just, in the back of your mind, you're like, all right, we have to win this round. Like, you can't. You can't lose. I mean, that, that's the match point. Absolutely. Especially for some of these less slate-heavy teams. we They need to get, you know, some of these more objective-based game modes down. They need to be a 2-3-5 team. You know, mm -hmm. some, some teams might not be able to slay with some of the best in, in game modes like Hardpoint. As Slash I, Nas picking up a big kill on the one. Stannis me watching Rose be bombsite, but it looks like four players for... Uh, for Butler, just going to be towards this mid area, maybe working towards this eight bomb site. Vortex going to be in events. He's in spot one, but he's going to wisely choose to back up. That's nice. Takes out two. And Hensley might get some good timing right here. He's in a spot oh, one. Alliance is behind Slash Nice. Takes him out. He's also behind Vortex. Takes him out as well. That's a nice two piece. Hensley takes out Rex, though. It's a one versus three for Alliance. He's going to spot two of them. He's just going to run away. Try and get to a better position. And look at this, number eight. He knows not to chase. Exactly. Now but see, I don't like 
I don't like the positioning out of out of Butler right now. I think you know once you get this bomb down on A, I think you need to back up towards your spawn where you have more cover and you can just hold that site. But they're playing really split right now. They have number nine watching mid, but Hensley takes out alliance on the back steps. It doesn't even matter. Absolutely great stuff right there. Butler answering the call, winning an offensive round. Now give it up to Razor Alliance mid. An excellent play right here. Gonna find a couple in the back. Butler winning that offensive round as needed. Now now we start wondering who's getting specialists, when they're getting specialists. And right now, it looks like on the side of UTK, they have two specialists available to them. Alliance with the War Machine and Stainless with that Graph Slam. And on the side of Butler, it looks like the War Machine's available. It looks like the Annihilator's available. And Johnny Ice getting really close to this uh, Attack 5 boost. Yeah, here in about 45 seconds, he is going to have that attack file boost. Johnny Ice is going to spot one to spot two in middle. He's just going to back up, call out to his team, and wait for the rotation in to come and help. Number eight, Hensley, just playing his life over there. And Maybe Slash. now he'll peek and help him. Yeah, Slash and Knives playing a great angle right there. He knows that they have to challenge him. He knows that uh, his teammate, number nine, Johnny Ice, is watching mid. He knows he's not getting flanked. Just able to hold that angle and force him to peek. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Ice going to find one. Going to get cut down. Traded out immediately. Hence, I'm gonna find one in the vents though. And Razor Alliance knows there's gonna be one pushing. Gets a nice hit fire onto Vortex. It's a 3v2 situation. And it looks like some big gunfights are gonna be coming up right now. Hensley knows there's gonna be one close. Cyraran's gonna find one. And it's now a 3v1 situation for Butler. And it looks like Juan. They know there's bombs down. They just killed that player off of the bomb. Slash and I was just putting some pre-fire shots down. He knows it has his help from his teammate looking over him. Just going to back down and Sir Aaron going to take him out. And they're going to go up 5-4 to four now. Absolutely. Nope. Slash and I just play. I called him out for right here. Knows that they just got to peek him. Absolutely snaps onto that player. Takes him out with ease. And UTK. Going to be down. Five, four to five. Butler looking to rebound after that map one. And right there we see Johnny Ice pop that attack five boost. They want to end it right here. They don't want to send it to around 11. They want to deal with that. But on the side of UTK, they still have that grab slam and they still have that war machine. I'm, yeah, Razor Alliance almost pulls it a little bit too early. He doesn't see anything. And so he's going to have to rotate to make any sort of use out of this war machine. This could be yeah. disastrous for Butler. However, he's going to be coming behind the mid. Oh no, he chooses to cut back through their spawn, wrapping around towards this hate bomb site. He's not going to find anything with this war machine. No, nice. but he gets a call out from Scars that they are in the middle. He's going to go middle. He's going to spot Vortex. going to take him out. No, he's not going to take him out. But he's... he is. He's going to get the trade onto him. And Cyraran, so close. If, he, if they, uh, I think I'll find one more it's kill, a, maybe. It's a two versus three. They find one, maybe get that grab two, slam. Slash and knives. If I was him, I, I pop this annihilator right now. Oh, that's a big gunfight to lose right there in the bank. He even has the timing. Oh. Right, Aaron gonna spot one. He's gonna spot two. He's gonna try and get out the door, but he's not gonna be able to. We got to go around eleven, J Pro. First S and D of the day. Get around eleven. That's what you love to see. I love it. And I think what's gonna be really interesting is how the specialist usage plays out. There's a couple of specialists. I don't know if they're going to get. I do not believe UTK has used their TAC 5 yet. Coming out of WAN. But I could be wrong. Yeah, he does not. He has not used it. I'm going to hop on so, board and see if he just chooses to pop it right away. Yeah. Yep, he does. The Vortex. Maybe a kill off of that Tempest. Let's see if he can get that. He's going to switch out to an ICR. They're going to try and play this long game here today. Going to run into two players. War Machine coming out of Hensley. Right off the rip. Going to put down three shots. Going to put down four shots. Only has two shots left. These players are counting. They know. Because a hit marker. But DevRex is going to pull out the Annihilator. Slash and Knives win the Annihilator fight, though. He's going to find two. There's another one coming. Oh! oh slash and oh, Knives! God. In the 4v2 situation with the bomb planted. Top. He's going to re-challenge. He's not going to... Sir Aaron going to gravity spike him. They are going to... Butler's going to win the game two in round 11. Incredible.
What a game, Jay, bro. Uh, what a game. I, I am mind blown by how good some of the plays have been. We've already seen, and this is only the first match. It's gonna find I am some. mind blown. Flashing now is finding this, one, this, this two. shot right here. And this. This. He didn't stand a chance, Jay, bro. That's, that's tough. Wow, we got an incredible map, too. Some really great plays actually coming out of both these teams. Uh, let's take a look at the scoreboard. I want to see who the heavy hitters were for Butler. Now Butler, it, it's slashing knives, sixteen and six with twenty six da hundred damage done. Hensley at twelve and seven, Johnny I seven and nine, and Siren of Vortex six kills. Vortex not having the best of S and Ds, but that's okay if he's able to pick it up in this control. They might find themselves up 2-1. Vortex had a stellar game one, 42-21, but S&D didn't go too well for him. But it's okay because the squad pulled off the W. That's right. And Razor Scar is 6-9 with less than 1k damage. Don't want to isolate, but a little bit more contribution needed out of him for that S&D. If we go to a game five, we're going to need all of UTK to step up and play incredible. But for the moment, we are going to be going to a frequency control. And we're going to be back just a few moments early for map number three, frequency control. Control the new game mode in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. A little bit of an interesting community reaction coming out of it. But all around, I think, I think it's been a great addition. I think there's been a lot of clutch moments, a lot of hype moments coming out of it. Ricky, what are your thoughts on control being introduced this year over CTF? Um, I'm not really a fan of control, but I mean, I don't think CTF would have worked too well with five players with the change to 5v5 this year. So I guess we just got to deal with it, you know, it's not my go. favorite game, mode, but you know, it's a good one. Absolutely. It looks like it's going to be a pretty standard setup for both of these teams. And, yeah. if, and if you're not familiar with how control works, two zones, each team has 30 lives, either capture both zones. Uh, as the attacking team or take out the life pool and if you're defending prevent them from taking the teams in the time limit or uh, end their life pool essentially great explanation j bro i don't know if it really was but we're gonna roll with it <laughs> and right now i'm hyped for this one pal and i think one thing we see out of the better control teams is once they get an initial set of kills they push up and try to kill them as they're trying to make their way back towards the capture points we see a lot of the uh, professional call of duty teams doing it and i uh, think yeah yeah, you see, it's basically like the same thing as um, I say hard point. You want to keep them from getting to the point um, for the longest that you can, basically. So like, you want to push up in their spawn and it'll slow their push. Exactly. And right now we're looking at a huge life advantage for Butler. They're up about nine. Ooh, Hensley just, turns just, on. Keep the, going. Hensley, Hensley turns on the slant. Uh, and it, Butler's already captured B, and all they need is one segment left on A right now. They just need somebody yeah. watching that back there spawn. I don't That's... think I don't think UTK is going to be able to contest. Actually, I was to say that they get in contest. Alliance takes out one of a slash and ice, turns around, gets a trade. Johnny Ice helps him out a bit, but Rex back in the point, and Johnny Ice going absolutely massive. And ice in his veins. They're going to capture A, and they're going to take the first round, twenty to seven in lives at the end of that incredible slaying power right there out of Butler. When talking to Vortex a little bit before this match, you said scrims versus UTK hadn't gone well, but right now they're there's something else. They're cruising through this control. Hensley. Just, just trying to aim. Just me one. Nice slide right there. And Butler gonna take the first round of this control. Control first two, three. And it looks like Vortex. Vortex already has that lightning strike, and he is 225 off. I'm not exactly uh, sure. I think that's a Thresher. I think it's a Thresher, too, but I I, I didn't want to say it. That's. I'm not sure how I feel about that. That's a pretty high streak. I mean, gonna spot one is going to take him out as well. He's going to play his life here, wait for his teammates to come help him. Put some shots down. He's going to take him out. He is going to get the Thresher. He's 150 uh, off this strike, team. in right away. Now Vortex is feeling to... himself right now. He's seven and zero oh in this game, really caring. Butler, we said that they need the strong leadership right there, and that ain't leadership. That's leading yeah. something. Hensley is cutting one down in this B zone. Just gonna heal up, trying to challenge something. He's gonna spot one player jumping down from the top. Gonna take him out as well. 
some gunfights going down inside A. Actually, no, they're all cut down, but it looks like a huge uh, A push coming out of UTK. All five of them flooding this zone. Number five, Slasher Nye's gonna need some help. He's not gonna be able to take anybody out. His cars cuts him down quick, and they're gonna dash this A zone. Let's see if Butler can break in and stop him. And Vortex, I just wanna keep my eye on him as he is 50 points away from a strike team. I don't think we've seen anybody's drop a strike team in a CCL match. Oh, he's gonna get two of them. He is going to get all uh, fully streaked out. And I would say that Henslay is also fully streaked out. He's going to have that drone squad, the Hellstorm, and the Lightning Strike. And they're defending this A zone. Two players will be pushing from the front. He's going to find one. He's going to uh, almost get down the second he one. almost did it to him, J-Pro. Almost did it. Caster Curse, I suppose. Haha. Uh, Warthog calling the Lightning. Take out one. Going to get out of the Lightning and pop Dev Rex. Right now. Major Alliance. Cuts him down though. Right now, if I'm Butler, I just say give up A. We have a six, a That's six exactly life. Exactly what they're doing. Let's just hold they're on this right. B. Mhm. Mm and slashing knives. Just gonna try to hold this outer pipes area. See, I think UTK is just trying to get a life advantage right now. Number eight coming behind number three Vortex. Actually, doesn't spot him though, so they're just trying to get this flank. They should have a pinch onto B. Not too sure though. Yep, they do. And Hensley gonna turn around, put some shots into him, but he's not gonna finish him. Johnny Ice trades him out. Yeah, Razor Lion's gonna pick up two on the flank. As they're gonna try to capture Zone B. However, Butler has a seven life advantage. Razor Lion just really needs to play his life in this situation. Two players are gonna push him from outskirts. And it's a. Uh, Butler just has the, the, the body advantage inside this B zone. Absolutely. It's 11 to 2 life advantage. Johnny Ice. Oh my god, absolutely snaps onto stainless. Last one left, level or level eight. Number eight alliance. Gonna heal up, throw this cluster grenade. I'm not too sure how I feel about wasting that equipment here. Exactly. Not gonna so have I'm gonna find the, the final time. kill onto Alliance. Butler up 2 oh. They still have a a load of streaks on their side. I think you just calling these streaks off the, the rip of this new round and just, just try and get a life advantage, you know, just play your life, try and uh, maybe capture one of the zones and then play a little bit of time. Absolutely. Butler showing up in this match number three, or map number three, excuse me. And I, I just kind of want to hop on board with Vortex. He's 15 and three. He's got the yeah. strike team. I'm trying to see if he's going to call yeah. the strike team, uh, strike team in right away. I, I, th I think he should. I, I really do, especially. Hensley is actually going to call in the drone squad. Trophy's going down for Butler. Trey's going down. <laughs> Sir Aaron going to cut down Johnny Ice. See, I just want to see if the Vortex possibly oh tempest. It goodness. could be really deadly in control. Where, you know, a lot of people are body sagging at the point. Vortex called in that Thresher. Uh oh. Johnny Ice cutting down everyone inside this A point. Gonna find another right here. Oh, he's not gonna win it though. One drop shots him. And Vortex does decide to call in that uh, drone squad, or excuse me, that strike team. Johnny Ice gonna pop his tag five. And they're just trying to capture A right now, but it looks like they're also simultaneously capping B. Number three, is Vortex, it? making a smart play really. I'm not sure really how you missed that melee. But I really like how they're playing that, the split push. Force the team to try to allocate players to both these objectives, and hopefully one side's going to be able to get the wave of kills needed to hold on to it for just the time being. Force UTK to spread their uh, defense thin, and just force them to make the mistakes. Yeah, hence they're going to call in the War Machine, and they're going to cap this point, and they're going to take this game 3-0. to zero. Wow, incredible stuff right there coming out of Butler. After a shaky start and a hard point. It's going to be an interesting, interesting situation. Interesting game four. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed right now with this Butler squad. That was that was a very clean control. Yeah. One, of the, one of the more clean ones I've seen, especially in CCL play. I like how they bounced back after that. After that hard point loss, went around 11 in the S&D, but you know, they clutched up in that, and they came out with the fire in this control. Yeah, and looks like we got game chat wondering, are they using the comsec device? No, they were not. Vortex started out 13-0 and on that map. He still didn't even come out first in this team. Henslay, 25-6. and Vortex, 28-5. and Slash and Knife, 17-11. Johnny Ice and Siren also putting in the work. But on the other side of UTK, nothing, nothing really standing out in this situation. 
Nobody really doing that impressive. Only one player on the team even breaking even at Scars with only 2,300 damage. Not really much you're going to do in that situation. We got Butler up 2-1 in the series versus the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. We'll be back in just a moment for a Hacienda hardpoint. We'll see if Butler takes home the series 3-1 or will UTK bounce back and force the game 5. We got Hacienda hardpoint for map number 4. We're going to see if Butler's going to be able to take it, take the series 3-1. Or is the University of Tennessee, Knoxville going to bounce back from losing two maps in a row and send us to a game 5? How you feeling about it, J-Pro? I don't know. Uh, I can't even remember what my prediction was at the start. I should have written it down, but I, I guess I didn't. So we're just going to roll with it. All right. I like it. Yeah. I can't even remember what my prediction was. I don't, I'm not really sure exactly what it was, but uh, we're just going to roll with it. We'll okay. Call. So this is something different. I've never seen... Oh, I have seen, but um, Vortex, he's going to start off the rip with an ICR. You know, I don't usually see him running this role. Usually see him with a Maddox in his hands. But he's going to spot Stainless on the top left. Going to put a couple shots into him. Not going to get the kill. Oh, he's going to get the kill now. Gunfight's going down to the hill. No one has control yet, though. And I think this hard point, more than most of the other hard point maps, a little bit different in the sense that this first hard point is meant more as... Uh, who's going to control the spawns for the remainder of the map, essentially, for the first rotation. Because a lot of times we don't see many hit points. I remember there's a couple of matches where both teams only got, like, 15 or so points on the hill, and that was about it as they were trying to rotate towards the Lambo next, uh, to the, towards the Lambo hill and just try to set up these spawns for the team. Yeah, it's a really scrappy hill because, you know, you, you can look at it from, uh, like, four different sides on the top, and then you have the two uh, cuts in the map. To, uh, to both sides, so it's, it's really scrappy. Exactly, and right now we've got Butler already set up on this Lambo Hill. They're fine giving up the remaining 10 seconds. Vortex is going to cut down too. Stainless. See, but the thing with their setup right now is you see uh, all the players from UTK, they're spawning Rock. It's because Butler doesn't have a player push up there, so they're just going to keep spawning on the front side or on the back side of that Rock, and they can just keep flooding the hill. So, you know, they're not getting too much of an advantage just by holding these spawns here. Someone needs to push out and make UTK spawn all the way in the back gray side of the map. Exactly, and Vortex doing a great job of just locking down the cell. The rest of his team is going to be spawning out now. They're going to try to refight for control of this hill. And two players pushing water. Three kills go in their favor. They're going to be pushing in towards this hill to gain some control, and they're going to do it. And if you look at where UTK are spawning out, they're spawning out towards the fences for that next hard point. But Butler... Right. Already on the rotation. Yeah, 10 seconds left. You know, there's not much to hold. Um, UTK doesn't even look like they're rotating at all. Actually, we have, we have one player there. And another mid-cut. But they got to win these gunfights. Vortex, or Slash and Oscar sound one in the back. And Stanless just trying to stay alive in this top platform with his Maddox. He's going to try to push around behind him. I'm not sure if Johnny is aware of that potential. However, one player, 8, is going to be looking at that. That is going to be Slash and Nice. Two plays in the back, one pin. Slash and Nice taking out one, taking out two. Gonna spot another top, but he has to back down and reload. Gets a couple shots into him, though. Re re challenges him. Exactly. Not I, gonna get the kill. And one thing I really wasn't aware of a couple of these players I didn't really know that well, but Slash and Knives is making a name for himself. He's looked incredible today on that ICR. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more, uh, more play from him in this matchup. Oh, 100%. Number eight, Slash and Knives already on the rotation. All of Butler except for number seven Vortex starting this rotation as well. It looks like Vortex just trying to slow down the rotation from UTK. Uh, UTK going to those next hill with the lead, but it's not too significant. Only about a, a 10 second lead or so. Exactly. And Johnny I is just trying to hit the wall bang there. He's not going to be able to do it, but he does know a player. Wasn't that general location. The player's going to try to hop up behind the Lambo. Johnny I is just going to play the corner. See right now, both players from Butler uh, pushed out both sides of the map. So it's gonna be a big flood from the middle point of the map, but you do have that, that rock head glitch to sit on. And it's basically, it's, it's a big choke point that the middle door. So you just gotta hold that off. And it's, it it makes this hill really easy to hold. Absolutely. And it looks like they're just going to hold on. Looks like this is going to be a perfect 64. Butler, they're just holding on. And Hensley, I say, is going to pick up his lightning strike. He's only 95. Yeah, excuse me, win. 85. 
Gonna get a nice flank on the Vortex. Not gonna finish him though. Vortex almost turns around and hits him with the turn and burn hand slate. Uh, gonna go ahead and cut him down for the trade though. And yeah. UTK gonna get these last five seconds. But no. it's not worth too much because Butler is already setting up for the middle hill at one player to beat. And exactly. And I think I think I think what's really important is to recognize that Hensley did was able to pick up full streaks and they are going to pop. Hensley is going to pop the drone squad in that middle hill. Runs right past the player. That's two for yeah, Hensley. That, that drone squad can you know like that can Stack up for a big, big amount of time, especially on this middle hill. It's so open. Uh, you know, you just lay down the hill, let your drone squad do some work exactly. over you. And I think the drone squad can be a very lethal score streak if used correctly. I see a lot of players just popping it, like, as they're running into a hill. But I think a lot of the times it can be used as just area denial. Force players to, like, try to run through it when they really can't. Mm hmm so like already has his war machine in this game. Exactly. Vortex already having his Tempest. And on the He's other... Also got Two more streaks for for maybe the rotation to this next hill um because it doesn't look like they have the spawns for that because then they're they're getting pinched basically they're gonna get pinched out number eight is and razor scar um, tried to pick up the gunfight but he's not gonna yeah, be able Mr. to Aaron takes out too yeah, slash... and they just broke through that hill just like that yeah slash and knives holding these spawns for butler he is going to be facing some pressure one's going to be in front of him and there's going to be one close to his left he's in a spot one isn't gonna be able to pick up the second on stainless, but two players from Butler wisely rotate to the back to help out, make sure they hold these spawns, especially on this hill. Spawning out is something you don't want to do. Yeah, but see, they're they're gonna have to give up this 30 seconds here because I don't think they want to fight this. Because if they fight this, they might lose the spawns for the next hill as well. So, you know, this 30 seconds, you have almost a hundred point lead. You can just give it up. Exactly, and I think what's really important to recognize here is that they don't want to feed any sort of streaks. That's how comebacks start to happen. One player just starts going off for his team, able to pick a couple of streaks, and then it just spirals out of control. Butler makes the wise decision to rotate on over towards this next hill, don't feed the streaks, and just maybe get some time and close out this map early. Yeah, Butler already set up with the trophies in the hill. Uh, Vortex is going to find one, but UTK is going to break through their setup, and it looks like Butler is spawning out. They're gonna try and get back in this action, but Slash and Knives did. Uh, it's still in the back. He's still alive. He's gonna try and find a few players. He's gonna get taken out from Stainless and Tin. And Stainless actually didn't get two John A's. Gonna try and slide in on him, but he does cut and him down. One thing to note right now is Hensley decides to uh, use his lightning strike on that hill and isn't able to find anything. That's gonna be incredibly huge for UTK going into these uh, next few hills. They don't have to worry about the lightning strike. All they have to worry about now is the hellstorm. And on Vortex's side, there is another lightning strike. But burning, making them burn streaks and not getting out of them is huge if they want to make a comeback. Yeah, it looks looking like Butler's going to hold this last 15. But um, they, they haven't started the rotation yet. And it looks like UTK is starting the rotation now. You got number three on your mini-up. Already heading over there. And actually, no, number six, Hensley. He does spawn near it. We posted up in Lambo, waiting for his teammates to come help him. Number seven, number nine, and number eight. All just coming off spawn, trying to come over there and help him. Vortex going to call in the lightning. See if he can find anything with it. He only finds one. But he scares all of those players back into the middle building. And it, it's making it really easy for Johnny Ice to come over there and help out his teammates and, and clean up these kills. But Sir Aaron going to gravity spike his teammate. <laughs> And exactly. Stainless oh. finds three. I was going to say they did feed Stainless a streak. It looks like they're just going to get back into this hill. This 30 seconds going favorable. It was a 100 point lead. If they're able to hold on these 30 seconds, going to only be down to a 20. Butler is throwing this map away right now. Yeah, see, I think we looked over Stainless right now. He's 31 and 17. And, and those are just his actual kills. That's not EKIA. If we look at the EKIA, he's 36 and 17. So. He's he's frying right now. You know, he got those streaks, got that lightning. That's a big, big crucial part of this break right here. But there's four seconds left, and they haven't started the rotation yet. Once again, Butler will win the rotation, but let's see if uh, if they can break it. Exactly. Juan gonna take out one. Gonna get cut down by Vortex. Immediately traded out. Vortex I, finding another. I think what's really gonna, gonna be interesting. Third. One thing I think is going to be really interesting is how this specialist usage comes down. UTK opts to go for the recon and get that. Uh, and get the vision pulse instead of going for, I believe, oh, I can't remember exactly, oh, instead of the, the Tempest. So I want to see how that's going to play out for them. Vortex can be incredibly useful on this uh, on this Tempest, but that vision pulse might just do something special for UTK, especially on this map. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Henslay does have another war machine available to know, so maybe you can see that uh, used to break the the Lambo Hill. I'm not too sure um, if UTK is using trophies or not. I haven't seen any down, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. Yes, that yes they not. have. They have used trophies. Have they? Okay. Absolutely. Well, and Scars is so close. I think I think he pops it right here, to be honest. Because yeah, Henslay gonna take out three, but he does take out one of his teammates. Uh, Butler has full control at a hard point right now. And so they cutting down one, trying to get his trade. See, right here is where I'd like to see him pop this war machine. He knows his teammates aren't in the front. Uh, see, that's exactly what he does. He notices it, calls it out. He's going to find one, but he's going to die immediately. His teammates are there for his backup, though. Exactly. And Scars did call in his vision pulse, so they do know where the other team is. But well, there's still 30 seconds left in this hill, and UTK isn't there. And yeah, now Henslade just sitting on this... This head glitch has got to be one of the most deadly head glitches in Call of Duty, to be honest. Um, just cutting everybody down, and UTK has got to break in here. Uh, they don't have anybody close. Uh, this is where Butler takes it right here. They take the series 3-1. Butler University taking the series 3-1. I, I, I didn't predict that. I, I don't think any of us predicted that, to be honest.